That was intense. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. So today we're talking episode 10, the finale of season one of The Outsider on HBO. I will also give you guys my thoughts on the entire series before I give you my overall score. Uh, it's a show I haven't really covered on this channel up until this point, but I thought, you know what? I'm caught up. Tonight's the finale. We're going to talk about this, and spoilers will be included. So if you haven't watched episode 10, just skip to the end. I'll put some time codes in the description, and if you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Okay, so in episode 10, the group finds itself in a climactic showdown in their last-ditch, desperate attempt to root out El Cuco. So really quick, overall thoughts. I thought this show started out so strong. I love the cast in general, from Ben Mendelsohn to Jason Bateman to Cynthia Erivo, who I believe gives uh, one of her best performances I've ever seen. It's phenomenal. And the way that they establish this world, the way that they set it up from the first couple of episodes, uh, when you're dealing with something that is a bit touchy, uh, it's a bit difficult to digest the fact that this creature, uh, what we learn later on in the series, is targeting children. That's how it feeds. That's how El Cuco survives and has survived all of these years. It is absolutely Stephen King sounding. It all comes down to the execution, though. How do they go about taking down this creature? Uh, how does it work itself out at the end? Do they reveal to the entire world if El Cuco is what they say that it is, or do they keep it all a secret? Do they do this giant cover-up, this big conspiracy where they're hiding it from the world? And that's the route that they ended up going down in episode Tint. That's obviously not how the episode began, so we had the cliffhanger at the end of episode 9, which I thought was fantastic. It uh, fades to black right after someone gets shot. You hear multiple gunshots being fired, and you don't know who's going to survive uh, and who's going to make it through. Now, when we pick up, we are literally in the midst of this battle. We had Jack up top with a sniper rifle, and listen, it's not all his fault he's being controlled by El Cuco, but I just want to knock his teeth out, man. He's taking away some of my favorite characters. I could not believe we lost Howard. I could not believe we lost Andy. I loved the relationship between Andy and Holly. It was so sweet. They just wanted each other to be happy. They shared a smile every time they were on screen together. So some really tough losses in the midst of that battle. The fact that we had the car blow up and then they went straight for it, man. They went directly into that cave. Ralph and Holly going for El Cuco. And that's really who it should have been because those have been the main two characters uh, up until this point. That was, um, that was a difficult part of the episode because when you have something building up like what this show has been building up, this entity in El Cuco, what it has done ruining the lives of the Maitland family, of really everyone who has been in that situation, thousands and thousands of people being affected as it has been doing this for years upon years upon years. And of course, in episode nine, uh, we got the establishment of the lore, what happened within that cave, the fact that those people looking for those children uh, ended up getting stuck. So we had to stay as quiet as we possibly could as we were confronting El Cugo, but we got the standoff between our three characters. Here's where this episode got interesting for me, and I'm not going to say the episode as a whole was completely disappointing. Pointing. And I don't even necessarily know what I was expecting from that confrontation. One, I did see a few questions being posed like on Twitter. People were saying, well, how, how does he have electricity? Because there are lamps and whatnot. That, I mean, maybe he used batteries, right? He had a whole little living room set up and he's sitting there all chilling. And that's not necessarily what the concern was going into that scene. What we wanted was the incredible confrontation between all of our characters. And the fact that, the, that we finally heard El Cuco speak and it wasn't technically the voice of El Cuco, but it was the voice of El Cuco through the voice of our boy Claude, who comes in there and, um, you know, makes the decision that, and here's one thing I'll say about this show, even though I think the intensity that was built throughout the show was incredible, the tension was phenomenal, I really enjoyed the filmmaking, I think some of the performances are some of the best I've seen on TV all year, certain characters, and a lot of the male characters, made very dumb decisions multiple times throughout the show. And the prime example of that in this episode was the fact that Claude shot his gun when he should not have shot his gun, literally putting everyone's lives in danger within that cave. And that's exactly what El Cuco was wanting him to do. He was baiting him into shooting that gun. He was baiting him because it knew, I'm going to say it, it knew 
that it had no chance at dying if it was just shot, right? This is not a human. This is not a person. This is an entity. This is a, a basically a demonic spirit inhabiting the bodies of these souls. Resembling the bodies, that's a better way to put it. Uh, so, of course, he shoots the gun. Of course, the place starts to crumble down. And our main antagonist is laying on the ground, looking as if it is dead. And I said to myself, there's no way it's that easy. This show could not be building up to this. Just one gunshot, and it's over. Now, it was suiting that it was his gunshot, uh, but I knew that wasn't the end of it. So, Holly goes in for the final, up. Uh, I'm gonna make sure he's dead. I'm going to stab him with a knife. That doesn't do it as well because Ralph goes back over to have that final conversation and basically the final confrontation saying, look, I, I know you're not dead. And this is never going to end. Now, here's where I think the divisiveness of this episode begins and here's where the controversing is going to spark from. The fact that Ralph decides to, well, he basically makes the call. I am going to end this right here and now. We could do this one of two ways. And here's where we come back to what I said at the beginning of the episode. We could cover this entire thing up, which is what El Cuco wants. And everyone knows that. Or we could reveal this to the world and allow you to sit here and suffer. And he even says at one point, we, we can have a crowd of people come in here and take pictures of the fact that you actually exist. And he goes with his gut. And his gut was to smash his head with a rock covered up. Uh, now, I was sitting back thinking, okay, is there a scratch on his... I mean, he touched the hand. He stabbed the, the hand with the knife, so could something be going on there? And it looks as if, pretty much for the rest of the episode, until that post credit scene, if you guys didn't get a chance to see that, we're going to talk about it. Uh, it looks as if that was it. That was the final blow. And I completely understand how some will say, well, that was too easy. And I get it to a degree. And honestly, I was a bit underwhelmed with the way that everything ended up at that moment because the rest of the episode, and I will say it did move a tad bit fast, it did kind of highlight through things, and it expected the audience to keep up with its frantic pacing of, oh, we got to end the episode, here we go, we, we've done the climactic finale, and, and we're going to go all the way until the end. And they do that by covering up these events and basically telling each individual person involved, you have to go by this specific story. And now I do like the fact that the Maitland family just got a little bit of, whew, they got a breather. Terry Maitland was exonerated, and it looks like that's going to be the case for uh, a lot of these other people involved or a lot of these other people accused. And that really was the crux of the story for quite some time. Before we were worried about El Cuco, for the first four episodes, uh, it was about what these individuals were doing, and it was about getting the audience to believe either one thing or the other, uh, trying to decipher, trying to figure out, was this actually happening? Were these people actually doing this? And then we realize, no, you can't be in two places at once. And it takes all of this convincing for each character to start to buy into the fact that this is something that is beyond, it is outside, <laughs> that's good, the realm of, of what we believe to be possibility. And that's what's so interesting about this show. And that's what Ralph, who I believe to be a fantastic character, he had to come to terms with. And, and his struggle, his character arc, was one of the biggest. I believe his and Holly's, I mean, obviously, they're the biggest two characters and whatnot. But their arcs were very important to how we feel about the show as a whole. And those were the standouts for the show for me. Those were the reasons why those character arcs and, and where we start, where we end, up until a point, those are the reasons why this show was just so fascinating and intriguing for me. And obviously, you have the building of tension. Obviously, you just have the horror of, one, what was happening and what wasn't shown with the children. And two, what we were shown. That was horrifying. And then buying into, buying into the realm of the unknown. Buying into the possibility that this could be something that isn't human. And, and that, is, uh, that is classic Stephen King. That is what I wanted from this show at the end of the day. And what I wanted from The Outsider, honestly, I got, man. I really did. I love this show, even though I was a tiny bit disappointed in where episode 10 ended up because it did highlight through all of those things. And they did the cover-up, which was a tad bit of a bummer. I wanted the world to know about this entity. And I was I was really bummed out that some of our favorite characters died. The, the fact that Andy died still gets to me. I'm just like, Andy! Come on, man. And that was really just covering episode 10. Now, as a whole, I thought it started out strong, like I said, ended off strong. There were a few episodes in the middle at times I said, 
We could probably shorten this by two episodes. If this was an eight-episode series, I feel like I would have gotten the exact same impact cutting out a few of these side stories. And I get it. It's, it's a bit procedural. We have to go through each of these things to get to that end game, and we have to build up the suspense and the intensity. And I completely understand why they did that. And not to say some of the episodes that lasted a bit too long and some of the episodes that had some subplots that didn't necessarily work for me, they weren't bad. They were genuinely solid. I just believe if we would have shortened this, um, it would be better, say you're binge watching it, say you're going back and watching it for a second time. I think it would be a lot easier if we cut some of those storylines and plot threads out. Uh, but I, I still really enjoyed what the show ended up bringing us. And even though I'm bummed out, that they did the cover-up, even though I'm still a tiny bit confused on where each character ended up just because they kind of sped through that ending. I did need a little bit more from episode 10, but I'm still satisfied with what episode 10 brought us, and I do believe it brought it home, and I probably wouldn't have even said that if it wasn't for that post credit scene with Holly. Now, earlier on in the episode, they're talking about Terry Maitland, and Holly turns around and she says to Ralph, Who's Terry? Now, that almost seems like a, a one-off line that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but you start to think about it, and what do you mean, who's Terry? Why would you ask who Terry is? Are, are you starting to go in and out because, I don't know, something happened in the process of that entire scuffle? Well, that's what it seems like because at the end, when we're zooming out, we see that Holly has a scratch on her arm. What does that mean? Okay, one, when did that happen? I'm trying to sit back and determine in my head. I need to go back and watch through the episode. Uh, when did she get scratched? But two, I mean, was it at that moment when Jack appeared behind her in the mirror? Was that, I don't think that's when it was. Uh, it had to be during the confrontation. But she did have a scratch on her arm. And to me, that says that El Cuco is now inhabiting Holly whether it's inhabiting her body as the entity or uh, just living vicariously through her, we don't necessarily know, but that tells me that we may get more of The Outsider. This, from what this sets up, and maybe they're just setting this up just to set it up. Maybe they're just setting it up to leave the audience with a, oh, that's cool, that's, that's cool, but I, I don't think so. I feel like we're going to get more of this. We've seen plenty of times when HBO has come out. <laughs> they come out with these limited series, and they go on for four seasons. Uh, and this cast is just too stacked. Well, not as stacked now because a lot of them died. But this cast is just too good, and these characters are too fleshed out at this point to not bring them back. And I think the response has been really solid as a whole. I really enjoyed the show, uh, and I would like to see another season. And it was too easy taking out El Cuco in the way that they did. But now we know that things may continue, and they may continue through Holly, which is simultaneously terrifying and sweet. So that's where things ended off for me. If you guys would like even more expansion upon my thoughts on this series, uh, be sure to let me know. I'm willing to make more videos on The Outsider because I really enjoy this show. It's probably one of the best shows I've seen the entire year. I've watched a lot, probably about 25 or 30. Uh, but The Outsider is definitely one that stands out in 2020. So I need your thoughts below before I give you my score. If you enjoy these reviews, if you like what we're doing on this channel, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Uh, as a whole, season one, the limited series, I'm going an 85% for The Outsider. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Really, really liked the fact that I could go through this and not have to review each individual episode, but enjoyed even more so coming back and talking about this episode specifically with you guys. So thank you so much for watching. You are truly the best. Leave your comments down below, and I'll see you very soon.